Today's video is gonna be a little different than what I've dropped before. Instead of reviewing one phone, we're taking a look at the top Android phones for most people in 2020 so far. I say so far because there are still some devices we're looking forward to getting our hands on later in the year, but we'll talk about those as well. Let's get into it. So let's begin by setting the rules for this top list. Number one, I'm considering these choices for a category you'll sometimes see labeled as most users. That means that I'm looking not at early adopters or the super tech savvy, but your average user for whom value is more important than top of the line spec. The user who wants the most bang for their buck without blowing up their bank account. Number two, some of the phones on my list actually went on sale mid to late 2019. If a phone became available to the public after April of 2019, it's fair game here. And in no particular order, let's begin with OnePlus 7T. Found on the web from reputable sellers for around $550 or less, OnePlus represents among the best of what high-end smartphones have to offer at prices most of us can actually afford. In this phone, you're going to get a great processor, a big, beautiful AMOLED screen with 90 hertz refresh rate, a solid camera which captures great images, even if it isn't the best one out there right now, and quick charging. You'll need that because the battery life isn't tops, but it will get you through a day depending on your use. This is one of my personal favorites, though I do wish it came with wireless charging. A phone which does come with wireless charging and can be found for as little as $350 on eBay and took pictures in low light, which I was highly impressed with, is Samsung's Galaxy S10e. This phone makes me look at much more expensive phones in the lineup and ask, why? Well, for me, the answer is bigger screens and S pens, but if you like smaller phones, smaller retail prices, and big value, I don't think there's a much better phone on the market. You can use this phone to charge other devices with wireless power share. You're gonna get excellent cameras and quite a few of the features you'll find in larger versions of Samsung's Galaxy line. What you won't get is three cameras on the rear or a fingerprint sensor under the glass. The phone features a fingerprint sensor on the side, but I utilized face unlock, which worked great and got me into the phone as fast as I needed it to. And speaking of doing what you needed to do, I'd be remiss if I didn't throw the Pixel 3a or 3a XL into the mix. If you're talking camera quality, Pixel phones have been among the best giving iPhones and Samsung's flagships a solid run for their money. There's roughly an $80 difference between the two, so size is re really makes the difference here. Like the OnePlus, you're not gonna get wireless charging, but what you do get is a very capable phone with long battery life and specs that do the job for someone who isn't looking to spend a great deal of money. Currently, you can pick up a Pixel 3a on Amazon for $300. Need a device for less than $300? The Moto G7 ticks a lot of boxes, and as I shoot this video, you can grab one from Best Buy for $250. This phone is for the budget conscious who are okay with a phone which is all business without a lot of extras. Though it actually comes with some highly functional software additions in Motorola's Moto Actions and Moto Display. You can check out my full review for more on those. Just know that when you choose the G7, you're getting a good camera. You're not going to have wireless charging, though you will have fast charging, which you'll need because battery life is only mediocre. But for users shopping in this range, it does what a mid-range phone does, and that is deliver dependable use. But what if you have a bit more to spend? Maybe you don't want to spend $1,400 on a phone, but you're willing to go somewhere between $700 and $1,000. LG's V60 ThinQ with dual display is a killer phone. While it isn't a folding phone, its dual display is a multitasker at its finest, and the specs on its device itself, the V60, are nothing to sneeze at. The screen looks great 
and the battery life with its 5,000 milliamp hours will get you through your day, but it's the cameras, audio hardware, and dual screens which make it a standout. The macro photos you can shoot are beautifully detailed and you still get a three and a half millimeter audio port and built-in digital to analog converter, which will have your wired headphones or car's aux port jack delivering beautiful music to your ears. You're going to get flagship specs with wireless charging, sub six 5G and 8K video recording. But the showstopper here is the dual 6.8 inch OLED displays, which will do everything from allow you to have multiple apps open at one time, one app open across both screens, one app open on one screen, using the other screen as your keyboard, or even gaming on one screen and using the second screen as a gaming controller. It's a beast of a machine, and you're going to pay for it. $800 for the V60 itself, or $900 for it with the dual screen accessory on T-Mobile, for example. And if top of the line is what you're after, the next phone on our list can scratch that itch. Samsung's Note 10 is the note for those who want all of the Note's features, but in something that will easily fit in their pockets. You get the S Pen and its new air actions, which allow you to make gestures with the pen in midair to activate features, along with cameras that are solid performers, wireless charging, fast charging, and speakers which are better than those found on some laptops. <laughs> The display is, of course, stunning with HDR Plus support. So paired to the loud built-in speakers, your media experiences on this phone will be delightful. Shooting video will also be great with the video image stabilization that is built into this phone. The only way you could do better is to shell out more money for the larger Note 10 Plus, which would cost you $150 more at full price, but for $1,100, I'm thinking it's a good idea to wait to see what the forthcoming Note 20 has to offer. Rumor is, it's a lot. And if you don't want or need an S Pen and want a phone with exceptional night shots, the Pixel 4 XL is one to look at. You're gonna get a phone with a 90 hertz refresh rate on the screen, cameras which changed the game and really made other manufacturers take low light capabilities to the next level with their night sight mode and motion sense for gesture controls. And of course, you're getting stock Android straight from Google with a promised upgrade path to three years of OS updates. And speaking of updates, we're only in the beginning of the year still. With the coronavirus throwing a wrench in the supply chain, some launches may be delayed, but there are devices to look forward to which may have you wanting to wait to make the move to your next phone. Samsung Note fans have a lot to look forward to this year. Rumors are that it may include faster storage than the S20, as well as faster RAM. We may see the S20's camera system in the Note 20, as well as 5G, and a new display, which is a 5G friendly, lower power consumption display, and even better handling of eye fatiguing blue light. And maybe the most important rumor of all, major upgrades to the S Pen. We'll see. Then my personal fave, OnePlus, has their OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro on the horizon. I'm actually a fan of both. I can't wait to get my grubby reviewing hands on those devices. The Pro model looks like it may cost somewhere around $700, and rumor is that both models will be 5G enabled. Other rumors around OnePlus latest batch of phones are a 120 Hertz screen refresh rate. And finally, maybe the addition of wireless charging and an entry level OnePlus 8 Lite device. And Google will be releasing Lite versions of its Pixel 4 and 4 XL in the Pixel 4a and 4a XL, though the rumors are that there may be no XL version this time around. Slated to be announced in May based on last year's timing of the announcement of the 3As at Google I.O., which has been canceled this year, the 4A may have a 5G version with Snapdragon's new 765 chipset. The Pixels have had excellent cameras and their night side modes are among the best in the business. So it may be well worth waiting a month or two to get your hands on one. So what do you think? Is there a phone 
you're looking forward to seeing this year? Personally, there's more I'm excited to see, but most of us won't be able to get our hands on here stateside, like certain phones from Xiaomi and everything Huawei, but that's a whole other discussion for another video. So now's your chance. Tell me which phones you want to see this year or which phones you think were the best of 2020 so far. You agree, disagree with what I've laid out here. Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. We don't take it lightly that you've watched these videos. We appreciate you. So thank you for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.